All right, welcome back. Uh, I'm just going to do a little quick video here on my MK3 cabinet. Um, when I had this done originally, or rather when I bought this cabinet, I envisioned having number one, number two, and number three, and number four all dedicated cabinets. However, I only really play MK2 and UMK3. Um, I very rarely play MK1, so I turned that one into a main, but if I want to play just MK1, I can always plug the PCB back in with the you know, with the little PCB edge connector right here um, that's plugged into the iPack. So anyways, back to this. What, what I wanted to do is I wanted to create some room here so I could get some light in this room instead of having a whole wall of arcade cabinets and just kind of look weird. So what I did is I bought a 6-in-1 uh, JAMA switcher, which basically you can put six different PCB arcade boards in the back of the machine and play them all, um, not at the same time, but you can switch in between them with this remote control that comes with the kit. Uh, before anybody asks me, I'm just going to say I didn't do the modification to the board that needs to be done for the plus and minus volts um, and I think the sound as well um, for this particular product. I had your MK Arcade Source um, do it, but he's in Afghanistan for the next two years, so unless you know somebody that can do the modification, you're going to have to probably wait two years until he gets back. So anyways, um, what I did, when I originally got this, I had MK3, UMK3, and MK4 in here. So now I, I have what I originally wanted and, and was just kind of waiting. So now I have MK3, UMK3, MK2 Challenger Edition, and MK4. And I'll show you how it works. Just like every other arcade cabinet, you turn on the on button. And what happens is... This comes on, the power comes on to the cabinet, but inside the cabinet there's a little switcher board that each um, of the boards plugs into. I'll kind of show you what it looks like. You can kind of see it down there. Some of the boards are vertical there. They plug into one big board. Um, I got this on jammaboards.com. And the way this works is you just press a button on the remote. So there's number one, and it brings up MK3. Now, just to repeat, these are actual arcade PCB boards. It's not a main computer like this. These are the real boards. So, you know, you just kind of get in. You can see this is MK3. This is really the only game I spend a lot of time playing. I don't play these machines too often. I just bought them as a collector's piece because I always wanted them as a kid. And, you know, you can see the condition of this. I've shown this many a times. It's absolutely, I'd say it's a 9.5 out of 10. So then if you want to go to a different game... You press number three on here and it takes you to UMK3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. You can see that one. All the characters are unlocked. And, you know, obviously everybody knows the difference between MK3 and UMK3. Then if you want to go to number five, it brings up MK4. Never play this game, don't really like it that much, but um, it's just one of those things that if you're going to have it, I just figure the hell with it. I might as well have it. The board was very inexpensive. Um, and I don't really like the game, I don't really like the characters on it, but I figured, you know, if I'm going to have this cabinet, I might as well have them all in here. So there's MK4. And then on slot number 6 is MK2 Challenger Edition. The only, only issue I haven't figured out with this is I, I had this problem on my machine that used to be here, the dedicated MK2, is that whenever I put the Challenger chips in here, you have to actually go in and add credits to it. <clears throat> so you hold the start button and you get this, you know, the opening screen like this. And since there's no credits, you know, there's nothing to do. So I have to add credits. And you can see I'm adding here. But I, if that's the biggest issue I have, it's no issue whatsoever. But MK2 is probably my all-time favorite Mortal Kombat version. Um, but I do like UMK3 to play the most. But you can kind of get the idea. This this is what I wanted to do in this room. I just really wanted two cabinets. This one here to play all the MK2s, or I'm sorry, all the Mortal Kombat versions except MK1, and then have the main, which is a dedicated MK1, to play all the you know main games like Street Fighter. Um, God, I don't even know. There's so many games on there. Killer Instinct. Although I do have a Killer Instinct PCB that I'm waiting for um, that I'm going to test out in here. And if that's the case, I might actually put it in here for a little bit. But just kind of a you know roundabout look at what I have. I, and like I said before, I don't know how to do this modification. Um, I paid Mike, you know, your MK Arcade Source, to do it. So if you guys want to do it, you're going to have to find somebody to solder wires and jumpers to different spots. But uh, 
like I said before, this is this is what I envision. You know, everybody else's projects are different, but this is really what I wanted. My favorite cabinet with all the boards in it, and then have my other favorite cabinet with uh, a main machine. So, hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, I'll help ask. But you know, once again, I do not know how to do the modification. I can kind of help you walk you through it. You also need to buy diodes, which is another thing I was unaware of um, to complete this project. But um, and then you also need four different kick harnesses. Um, that's also a pain in the neck. All those have to be soldered together and then ran separately to each individual board. So um, not an easy project to undertake, but once it's done, as you can see, it works great. And it takes the place of having four different arcade machines in your house. So I hope that helps anybody with their questions. I've had many questions on this setup before, and I just thought I'd do a new video on what's changed and now that I have exactly the way I want it uh, for the future.